Hey guys, Joe here doing a one take on a pretty cool revolver. The reason it's a one take is because that isn't finished being rebuilt yet. Come back tonight for a live stream at 10 o'clock and you can check that out. This is being filmed on Friday and uploaded same day. What we are looking at is a revolver. If you are familiar with the Heritage line of revolvers, you'll know that they make a line of 22 long rifle and 22 magnum cylindered old school revolvers we'll do a safety check show you this one's empty but there's traditionally have this door that opens so the cylinder stays in here until you remove the center post this one is more traditional this is a smith and wesson 48 3 chambered in both 22 long rifle or 22 magnum it's a little bit of a rare bird. This one is on loan from Liberty Arms. So if you want to maybe check out their website and give them a shout and say, hey man, saw it, I wanna buy it. That would be cool, it'll help me out and it will show the store that you guys are watching and interacting. This one came in on trade and it's kind of a different duck. Let's talk real quick about the six, or excuse me, the 48 lineup. The 48.3, which this one is, came out in December of 1967. This model ran until 1986, when it was finally discontinued. If you go to Smith & Wesson's website, number one, you can spend an hour just scrolling through the revolvers they make, but number two, the only version of the 48 they make currently is a regular 22 long rifle. They do not make one with the 22 magnum cylinder in it now i'm sure you could probably go ahead and buy a cylinder from somewhere and interchange it if it has the same style of bridge this one is finished in stainless which is hard to find any information on i'm pretty sure this is near the end of the run but that still makes this a 34 year plus old gun yes those were almost words but it has some nice features on it for a gun of its age it has a nice sight set up and this was a sight set up back in 1967, except for this front sight looks like it's been changed. Either that or that dot is just kind of weird. But it's just a pinned in sight, so it can be changed. Trying to age it, I'm not 100% sure if that is the barrel pin or if it's for the sight. So if somebody knows more than me, let me know down below. I think that's just for the sight. It helps age it because they stopped pinning them in 1982. But again, that only leaves a four year run. But as you can see down in here, if anybody knows their serial numbers, maybe you can look that up and put it down there for me. This is a Model 48-3. As you can see, it is a six shot, and this one is the long rifle cylinder, as you can see, LR. And it is recessed so it can take the rimmed cartridge. It is a rim-fired cartridge. Double action and single action, and I'm not pulling the trigger without at least a snap cap or a dummy round in there but it's very nice uh the trigger i accidentally pulled it in double action mode because i expected it to be like an 11 11 and a half pound trigger nope it's like a seven and a half pound trigger so it's very light and easy to accidentally pull in single action i mean that's just that's a hair trigger right there and she's definitely gonna go these wood grips, I'm not sure if these are original to the gun. It does have Smith & Wesson medallions. However, they don't sit 100% flush and they're canted. So again, if somebody has one of these, let me know in the comments. One of the rarer things about this one, on top of it being a stainless, and I don't think it was refinished because you would have had to take all the finish off and redo the whole gun, is the fact that it came with its 22 Magnum cylinder. That's another thing that's very rare to see with these guns. Typically, it'll come with one cylinder or the other, but this one left the factory with both of its cylinders. And as you can see, it's stamped MAG for Magnum, and again, still recessed, so that the cartridge can fit nice and tight. This is a 4-inch barrel on this one, and again, this thing is in incredible shape for its age. I don't think it's been fired too much, either that or it was professionally cleaned. You look at the front of the cylinder, and you can see... There's not much in the way of wear or powder residue that's just kind of wedged in there. It's obviously been fired, but not a whole heck of a lot. I really like this thing, and if it's still here in a week, I'd like to take it out and go shooting. Daniel and I aren't able to go out as often as we would like, but hopefully we can get out there and take this thing out and shoot it and see what it's like, because I don't get to shoot vintage iron very often. 
Oh, real quick, let's go ahead and show you how to change a cylinder. Don't know what the heck I'm thinking by just putting it back up there. Go ahead and make sure it's clear. Really easy to do. Well, I say easy, but if you have hand issues and nerve issues like me, it can be a little complicated. But this bridge is actually two pieces. You pull out and twist up. And you can see there that the bridge is hinged. So all you got to do is take your new cylinder, drop it right in there, pull out again, and the cylinder goes into place. Locks in and you are ready to go. And as you can see, it works just normal. To reverse it, you just do the exact opposite. And it's easier to do it with the cylinder pushed all the way forward because you can accidentally bring the cylinder almost all the way out of the gun. In fact, I've taken it out of the gun by accident and that can be a pain in the ass. So just make sure it's up as far as it can go. Pull out, twist up, boom. This is a really cool design. I wish the Heritage would copy it. And you are back to ready to fire. Unlike Heritage, there is no quarter cock. Once you do that, it's gonna rotate the cylinder. The only way to rotate the cylinder is to open it all the way. Yeah, pretty awesome, pretty neat. Once again, uh, this is on loan from Liberty Arms, but it will be for sale. Pricing is yet to be determined. Give them a call and shoot them an offer. Uh, finding it with both cylinders, again, is very hard to do. Finding it in stainless is apparently even harder to do. I've seen these run in the anywhere from 900 to 1700, depending on if they have like their box and everything with it. I have no idea what they're going to be asking for it, but I know it would make a great addition to anybody's collection if you are a revolver aficionado. I'm done with this one, so we are going to put her to bed. It's going back to the store tomorrow, so it should be available on Saturday, unless they decide to keep it. But give them a call. Tell them that you saw it on the Jiminy Show. You're very interested in it. They'll ship to your FFL if you're out of state. They can do whatever you need to. This one will be a very nice piece for somebody's collection. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Any questions, leave those down below. As to the false flagging situation, it seems to have resolved itself. I think YouTube was testing an algorithm because they were only age-restricting demonetized videos, and I've appealed them all, and I've only lost one or two of them, but they were on demonetized videos anyways that nobody was seeing. However, they're now age-restricted, which is a big boo. Uh, I am fighting every time they try to demonetize a video. They're being pretty good about it with the manual reviews, but the thing you have to remember when you're fighting a manual review is it's an actual person that's going to watch the video and determine whether or not your video meets the criteria for safe for advertisers or not. And I have to keep fighting with them because they see a picture of a gun in the algorithm or I list the name, it automatically demonetizes the video. So as soon as I upload it, even if I leave it on un, um, unlisted, it's going to demonetize it and then I have to apply for a review. It's a pain in the ass, but I will do it for you guys. So I want to see those thumbs up, subscriptions, comments, all that stuff. 3,700 subs, you guys are kicking it up there. I really want to get to 5,000 before the end of the year. If you guys can just, uh, you know, make everybody you know subscribe, that would be awesome and help me out big time. Use my affiliate links. And that's about it. So, as always, I'll talk to you later.